sing us one of the songs of Zion. He's known to millions around the world. Today, the charismatic host of the 700 Club, Gordon Robertson, shares his story and discusses with Jonathan the significance of the reestablishment of the State of Israel in 1948 and the impact this tiny nation has made on the world. Is the nation of Israel a fulfillment of last day's prophecy? Find out just ahead on Jewish Voice. Shalom and welcome to Jewish Voice, proclaiming Jesus as Messiah to the world and helping you to understand the Jewish roots of your Christian faith and world events surrounding Israel. Well, today the host of one of the most popular Christian television shows in the world is here to tell us why he cares about Israel and why you should care in the impact that this tiny nation is having on the world today and is likely to have in the future. Please welcome the CEO of Christian Broadcasting Network and host of the 700 Club, Gordon Robertson. Gordon. Welcome, my friend. Hi, Good to be with you. Good to have you. Yeah. I'm really, really glad to have you here, and thank you. Uh, 48 hours ago, you were, or so, you were in the Philippines. I was in the Philippines celebrating 20 years of the Asian Center for Missions. Got over 860 missionaries deployed from that tiny island nation around the world, and it was a great joy to be with them. Well, I don't know what time it would it is for you. It's but like 7 a.m., I think. <laughs> yeah, so you have a full day. Well, you have a full day ahead of you. Now. I just came back I'm from I'm just Ethiopia. waking up. It's, well, great. Well. Congratulations, by the way, on hosting one of the longest running television programs, not just Christian television programs, but television programs on television today. And I asked you in the green room, what's as old as the 700 Club? And the Tonight Show, Tonight Show. is one, but, I think but the 700 Show. Club is one of the oldest running or longest running programs in broadcast history. And we have a unique claim in that it's been the same host since 1966. Indeed, is, your dad is <laughs> is a powerhouse. He just yeah. keeps going. How's he doing, by the way? He's doing great. He's 85 years old. I call him the Iron Horse. And there's no quit in him. He he wants to keep hosting. He wants to keep preaching the gospel. And he wants he wants to keep doing it until Jesus comes back. He so. is amazing. He really is. Please give him our love. We'll do. Uh, you know this already, but I just want people to know that Jewish Voice started on television because of your father. He reached out to Lewis Kaplan, his Jewish friend, and he said, Lewis, you gotta be on television, and he provided, I don't know how many years he did this, but he, he, he paid for the television time for this, this program. So thank you to uh, CBN, and thank you, Pat Robertson, for uh, getting us going. Lewis was a radio preacher, uh -huh. and he used to, to preach the bark off of trees and yell into that microphone I have as old Radio messages. guys don't like TV. No. And, and <laughs> Brother Kaplan, we call him Brother Kaplan, never liked television. Uh, he used to tell me it just was too expensive. And <laughs> I'm, beginning, <laughs> I'm beginning to understand where he was coming from, actually. It is expensive, but you also reach a huge number of people. And when you put those two together, the, the reach, the ability to impact people, um, and, and also impact people through recorded programs uh, that you, you just can't do that in a meeting. You can't do that even in a big stadium. You can reach millions. I remember Lewis Kaplan saying on, on video, we have it on video saying, in the midst of complaining about the cost, he used to say, imagine in one program you can reach more people than Jesus reached during his entire earthly ministry. And it's an amazing vehicle to get the gospel out around the world. Mm -hmm. And you guys have been doing it so, so well. Now, what's the story behind the 700 Club? How did I, I've often wondered, how did you get the name 700 Club? Oh, way back in the 1960s, uh, 1966, Dad did some math, uh, and our monthly budget was $7,000 a month. So he said, I need 700 people to give $10 a month, and we can stay on the air. And that was the beginning of the 700 Club. It started as a fundraising idea that was then a telethon, and it worked so well, they said, well, let's keep this going, and how do we have the variety, how do we have music, how do we have guests, how do we 
do that and do that every night, uh, lose the telephone to keep the show. What a pioneer. What a pioneer. Now, you didn't want to be in ministry. In fact, you no. said the never, the, I never will be host <laughs> no. this program. And wh why didn't you want to go into ministry? There was a, quite a contrast between your, your childhood and your grandfather, who was a very prominent senator. Well, when you see the 700 Club, when you see CBN today, you don't see the struggle. And those first formative years, probably a good 15 years from 1960 to 1975. Which you had to live through, that's the thing. Right, I grew up in that. Uh, I was two years old when it started. And uh, it was hard. Um, and, you know, Dad provided, God provided, uh, but it wasn't what I saw my grandparents have. So we drank powdered milk because that was cheap. Uh, we ate a lot of soybeans. Over time, you, you get tired of them. And we had soybean meatloaf. We had, soybean, we had soybeans everywhere you could make them. And I take it you don't eat soybeans anymore, right? I do not. Yeah. I do not. I, not surprised. I abstain from soybeans. But I'd go see my grandparents, and my mother's father was a president of a paint company. So when I'd go to the grandparents' house, it would be cornflakes and whole milk and uh, roast beef and turkey, and it was uh, it, much, things were, much different. Life. Things were different, <laughs> and uh, it really impressed upon me. Uh, it was kind of curious how how deep that got within me that. There is a huge cost here, and I don't want to pay that cost. Now, but you had you had a prophetic word spoken over you from the time you were five years Many. of age. Many. Uh, one in particular, I was sitting in Dad's chair, and a person came by and said, Look, "God just wants you to know, one day you're going to sit in the chair." Uh, and as a child, I'm, I'm probably six years old. Uh, as a child, I did not respond, yay. I went, no. <laughs> <laughs> it had no. to be the last thing on your list you wanted to write. It was no, the I, I, didn't, I didn't want to be in ministry and uh, actually thought I had disqualified myself. I, I didn't want to do it. I, I wanted to go and, and make money. I wanted to have the things of the world and set my sight on that and said I'm going to be a lawyer and achieved all of that. Um, but at the end of the day, when you're called into ministry, nothing else satisfies. There's no escape. There really isn't. Yeah. You, can, you can't outrun God. Let's fast forward and you end up going to a very prestigious school, Yale, mm -hmm. Yale Law School, and then you join a very prestigious practice. And uh, I, I, went, I went Yale undergrad. My father went Yale Law. And it's sort of strange. He went Washington and Lee University undergrad, Yale Law. I went Yale undergrad, Washington and Lee Law. So we're oddly opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but but so you ended up you ended up in a law firm. Being a lawyer isn't all it's cracked up to be uh, when you think about it. Uh, you you argue for a living. Um, yeah. <laughs> you have everything you want. Right, except God oh, yeah. has another plan for your uh, life. I've, I made partner and did what you're supposed to do uh, to su to succeed in that in that business, but some it, things it some things missing. Didn't satisfy. We have to take a break. Uh, much more with Gordon Robertson when we return, and later survivors of the Holocaust that are actually living in Israel, but surprisingly, many are poor, alone, and suffering. We're working to let them know that they are not alone, that God loves them and cares for them, and you can be a part of it. All just ahead. Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and forgotten people in the world, people who have never before seen a doctor or dentist. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, Jewish Voice is urgently preparing to bring humanitarian aid to a poor, poverty-stricken community in Tachgeit, Ethiopia, the Beta Israel. 
and overlooked and faithful people who have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years, but have recently been subjected to brutal persecution by their neighbors because of their distinctiveness. We urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital life-saving outreach. The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Will you be a blessing to these precious people and the thousands of others around the globe who are desperately in need of help? Call or click now to share a gift of any amount, and we'll say thank you by sending you a new DVD narrated by the CEO of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Gordon Robertson, The Hope, The Rebirth of Israel. This riveting and inspiring docudrama examines the years preceding the creation of the modern state of Israel and the many miracles and significant moments that unfolded during this historic timeline. With its archival footage and dramatic reenactments, you're sure to be moved by this compelling look back at the events, which culminated in the Declaration of Statehood of Israel in 1948. You'll also receive a DVD by Jonathan Burnus, A Rabbi Looks at Israel. With this in-depth inspirational teaching filmed on location at biblical sites in Israel, the Bible comes to life as you see where Yeshua walked, talked, and lived. And it even points out where significant prophetic events may take place. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $100 or more today to help save lives, we'll send you all of the gifts just mentioned and this exquisite lion and lamb statue. Let it grace your home or office as a deeply meaningful reminder that Yeshua, Jesus, is both the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah and the lamb who was slain for all of us, the ultimate sacrifice. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and to help reach thousands of others around the globe, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some of the neediest people in the world. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call, write, or click right now. My guest today is Gordon Robertson. Many of you know him as one of the hosts of the 700 Club. He's also the CEO of the Christian Broadcasting Network, and he loves Israel. I, I want to jump ahead now. You're a successful lawyer, but God's got other plans for you. You get a phone call out of the blue, out of the clear blue. Yeah. Uh, an old friend of mine, uh, John Jimenez, who is the head pastor of Rock Church, he's since passed away. He called me up and he said, Gordon, I had a dream about you. And I knew John from the 1960s when he first moved there. And uh, you, you went to Rock Church, the power of God was there. And so when he told me, uh, I have a word from the Lord, I, I was like, okay, I can't, I can't, I better I listen. Can't, I'd better I listen. can't say no. Especially a dream. I'm supposed to go with him on a mission trip to, to India. So I go, okay, John, when are you leaving? It was Thursday afternoon. He says, I'm leaving Monday morning. My lawyer brain kicks in. There's, there's no problem here, Gordon. Just you say, never get if, a visa. you get, never get the visa. John, <laughs> if you can get me the visa, I'll go. I didn't know he had already set it up with a visa of expediting course. service, and he had already made arrangements. And so uh, that night, my passport went on a flight counter-to-counter -counter service. They still had that back in the 90s. And the visa expediter picked it up at the airport counter, and the next morning at 8 a.m., we're first in line at the Indian Embassy to get me a visa. So he calls me the next afternoon, I have your visa. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I, I like was on a trip. I like to say this, Gordon. We have free will, but God stacks the deck. That's how it feels to me. So you end up going to India, and your life changes. Oh, it absolutely changed. Uh, for the first time in my life, I saw someone giving sacrifice to a stone cow. And you can see that in video, but when you see it in person, and you see how earnest her prayer was, she wasn't going through a ritual. This wasn't some tradition. She earnestly wanted the stone cow to answer her prayer. And I reacted to that. Uh, the first one was sort of an anger. How dare you? You're made in the image of God. How dare you do that? And then the second was, okay, you pray to your cow. I'll pray to the living God. We'll see who gets an answer. And then I heard a voice behind me. No one has ever told her. And it just cut deep into my heart. Oh, my. Right out of the Bible. No one has ever, ever told her. her. 
And here she is, she's probably in her 60s, and she's never heard the gospel. And here I had heard the gospel all my life and had turned away from the call to preach the gospel. And here's someone right in front of me that I'm mad at. And then Jesus tells me, I mean, you've got no right to be mad. You're the one that hadn't gone to tell her. You're still, the one that didn't do it. There's still people all over the world that are in that same situation. Millions. They have millions that have never heard the gospel, and they're not going to hear it unless we tell them. Huh? That's powerful. I can see the impact that it's still having on you. Oh, yeah. It's now 21 years later, and I still tear up. And I still get choked up with... You know, just his presence being in that moment and, and realizing, you, you realize that he hasn't given up on his dream for me. And, and it, was, it was very profound. And he hasn't given up on his dream for everyone. He, wants, he doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants them all to come to know him. Powerful. Let me take you to another emotional experience. Your father took you to Israel when you were 12 years of age. It and was that, 19, that had a powerful impact on you. He uh, made a very special point of showing me the blood moon of 1967. And then Israel retook Jerusalem. And I, that I was don't a, want people to miss that because we just went through these four blood moons that were so such a focus. But your dad, you, you actually remember the blood moon connected with the Six-Day War. Right. I mean, That's it incredible. Was, he, he was very specific. Look at this. This is a sign in the heavens. And, and God has ordained the sun and moon to be signs for us. And then the Six Day War. And the prophecy of Jesus had been fulfilled that uh, Jerusalem is no longer trodden under the foot of the Gentiles. And I'll never forget being at the Western Wall and the dancing Torah scrolls and the joy, the joy there that once again uh, the people were in the land. It, it was. An absolutely moving experience. We're going we're to have to talk more about that tomorrow. I want to jump to a, a beautiful film that you have taken from inception all the way to completion called The Hope, The Rebirth of Israel. I think it's a remarkable piece of work. Thank we're going to show a clip from that, and then okay. I want you to comment on it. We all just right. have a minute left. Let's take a look. By the rivers of Babylon, we sat down and wept as we remembered Zion. For those who carried us away captive asked of us a song, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? But now, thus says the Lord, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. I have loved you, therefore I will give men for you and people for your life. I will bring your descendants from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not keep them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. That is stunning. That is stunning. We just have 30 seconds left. Tell us what we just saw. Uh, you saw the introduction to the hope. It's taken from Hatikva, the national anthem of Israel, which means the hope. And the handwriting here, this is Herzl's handwriting. We made a font of, of Herzl's handwriting. So it's all about the formation from roughly 1890 to 1948. Who were the principal players and who had the dream that Israel could be reborn? We, we've, we, we've got to have you back to talk more about this tomorrow, okay? Gordon's going to be joining us again tomorrow, and we have so much more to talk about. His new DVD, The Hope, The Rebirth of Israel, highlights the many miraculous events that culminated with the founding of the modern state of Israel. And later, we'll tell you how you can be part of a project to help Holocaust survivors living in Israel. They're poor, alone, they're suffering, but God has not forgotten them and he is using Christians to show them his love. We'll be right back.
Here at Jewish Voice, we are dedicated to proclaiming the gospel, the good news that Yeshua, Jesus, is the Messiah, to the Jew first and also to the nations. One key way we do this is by providing life-saving medical help to some of the most impoverished and forgotten people in the world, people who have never before seen a doctor or dentist. In helping them, we share God's love and the good news of Yeshua, Jesus. Today, Jewish Voice is urgently preparing to bring humanitarian aid to a poor, poverty-stricken community in Tachgait, Ethiopia, the Beta Israel, an overlooked and faithful people who have been practicing ancient Jewish customs for hundreds of years, but have recently been subjected to brutal persecution by their neighbors because of their distinctiveness. We urgently need your help to equip and fund this vital life-saving outreach. The elderly, children, infants, and toddlers could die for lack of basic medical care. You can help save lives, but we must act now. Will you be a blessing to these precious people and the thousands of others around the globe who are desperately in need of help? Call or click now to share a gift of any amount, and we'll say thank you by sending you a new DVD narrated by the CEO of the Christian Broadcasting Network, Gordon Robertson, The Hope, The Rebirth of Israel. This riveting and inspiring docudrama examines the years preceding the creation of the modern state of Israel and the many miracles and significant moments that unfolded during this historic timeline. With its archival footage and dramatic reenactments, you're sure to be moved by this compelling look back at the events, which culminated in the Declaration of Statehood of Israel in 1948. You'll also receive a DVD by Jonathan Burnus, a rabbi looks at Israel. With this in-depth inspirational teaching filmed on location at biblical sites in Israel, the Bible comes to life as you see where Yeshua walked, talked, and lived. And it even points out where significant prophetic events may take place. If God has blessed you with the means to share a gift of $100 or more today to help save lives, we'll send you all of the gifts just mentioned and this exquisite lion and lamb statue. Let it grace your home or office as a deeply meaningful reminder that Yeshua, Jesus, is both the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah and the lamb who was slain for all of us, the ultimate sacrifice. Please remember, God has promised to bless those who bless the Jewish people. To share an urgently needed gift in support of this vital outreach and to help reach thousands of others around the globe, please call, click, or write now. And remember, your generous gift will make you a part of extending life-saving medical help to some of the neediest people in the world. Once again, time is of the essence for many of these people. Please call, write, or click right now. A major part of what we do here at Jewish Voice is to reach out to help Jewish communities in need around the world. Surprisingly, one such group are Holocaust survivors living in Israel. Many actually live well below the poverty line and they're alone and suffering. Recently, I traveled to Israel to meet with some and to see for myself. I have to tell you, I fell in love with these people. They're so warm, so friendly, so appreciative. They have amazing stories of survival to share. Sadly, they're struggling financially and often don't have enough money for food or the essential medicines they need due to their advancing age. Take a look. Can you talk specifically about the people that need our help? Maria, she's from Ashdod. What was the most significant I found out is a endless loneliness. Одна умерла у нас 39-го року, середуча. Нас дві осталося. Мама нас тримає до гори, вони стріляють по голову, ми кричимо, плачемо, пищимо, мама. А коли вже вони переходили. Many of these survivors endured imprisonment in the worst conditions imaginable. Yet here in the twilight of their lives, 
Many remain little more than prisoners in their own homes, with barely enough to pay their expenses. They remain shut in, surrounded by little more than their memories. They may have come home to the land of promise, but most remain strangers in a strange land, unable to understand or speak Hebrew. Ironically, the very same strength and resilience that helped them survive the horrors of the Holocaust now keeps them from asking for help. Потому что люди грамотные, люди цивилизованные, и они понимают грань между гордостью и нищетой. Я уже сказал вам, что среди нас есть такие люди, которые умрут, но не попросят. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. How long do we have to help these people? How much time is left? We lose every second. During our conversation, few Holocaust survivors have done. Every 45 minutes, a Holocaust survivor passes away. That's an average of 33 a day, over 230 per week, 1,000 each month. Within 10 years, they will all have disappeared. We are committed to helping these Holocaust survivors in the final years of their lives. We only have about a decade left, and then they'll all be gone. You can help us make an impact on their lives while there's still time and share God's love with these people that have suffered so much and live to tell about it. For more information on what you can do to help, contact us at 800-299-9374 or go to jewishvoice.tv. The Lemba, a lost tribe of Israel discovered in the remote regions of Zimbabwe. DNA proves that they are descendants of the priestly tribe of Aaron, practicing their Jewish faith for thousands of years, not knowing their long-awaited Messiah has come and will come again. And the Jewish Voice Outreach Team has the privilege of sharing this amazing good news with them through our outreaches in Zimbabwe. It's amazing. Come witness this miracle. Be an important part of God at work in these last days, gathering His people back to Himself. We need volunteers urgently for this outreach, medical professionals, prayer partners, and practical service volunteers as we minister to thousands of very needy and spiritually hungry people in just one short week. Come with us and help these desperate Jewish people. Say yes to being God's hands and feet. Please answer the call. Thank you so much for watching today and thank you to Gordon Robertson for joining us this week. As we close out the show today, I want to remind you to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 122, 6 says, may they who love you prosper. So if you want to prosper, pray for Israel. They need our prayers. Well, until next time, I'm Jonathan Burnus saying shalom and God bless you. Jewish Voice is made possible by the support of friends and partners like you. 